Hey everybody, back up in Harlem. I'm going down to uh, Long Island City. I just dropped Glacy off at the, the apartment because we're finishing moving out. It's raining a little bit. Hopefully I can make it to uh, Hennick Lane before it starts pouring. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. I moved on the west side because, uh, you know, because of the pandemic, there's been more opportunities for apartments, so we were able to get a place on the west side. I shouldn't get too wet. I got to just go over to. Uh, and a clean. NYPD actually on the right there. Good, good police department. They don't bother bikers too much. So New York is actually a really good riding city. You know, believe it or not, uh, you just have to watch out for pedestrians. Actually, I found LA to be a great city for riding for safety on a bike, but cops are really a hassle. I mean, you can you can lean you can legally lane split there, but you know when you start driving the bike, if you go over the speed limit a little bit they're right there ready to give you a ticket Johnny on the spot and then you know they'll turn a traffic uh, stop into a major big deal like they'll turn it into a, a felony and easily whereas NYPD uh, will not escalate things if it doesn't need to be if you're on a bike and uh, you know basically they just have speed cameras everywhere there's no points on them and uh, that's it you know people get speed camera tickets for speeding and things like that but they don't make a a, a huge thing out of it uh, if you're on a bike now in a car it's another th story because in a car you can you can do a lot of damage to a lot of people here if you're driving erratically but New York is actually a New York City is actually a really good riding city believe it or not Some people wouldn't believe it. Pedestrians, you gotta watch out for pedestrians though, because they do not, a lot of pedestrians are unaware of motorcycles here. I don't know why, because there's so many of them, but they'll jump out between cars. You have to be ready for stuff like that. When you're lane splitting here, people are not gonna expect you like they would in LA. In LA, they wouldn't jump out between cars or jump or walk between, car, between traffic lights and uh, walk between the cars because they know that a motorcycle is going to be lane splitting there, and it'll it'll cause they can cause an accident or get hurt or get hit. So people are very aware of motorcycles in LA. They're not going to open their door on the, on the side of the road, you know, that's wide open. 
Whereas you might have someone do that here. The unexpected thing here is the trouble, you know, taxis, things like that. But as far as like the laws, it's really not that strict here, which is makes it decent to ride, you know, because you don't have to worry about losing your license or things like that here. I'm sure people will have comments about that, but it's reality in New York, you know, that they don't hassle you too much. There are occasional, you know, pre-pandemic, there were occasional times where they would lock down a whole highway, you know, to which would be really mean to nail everybody for lane splitting. They'll just purposely block the highway and then cause traffic so that people lane split. That's kind of mean. I, I always thought that was really mean, but you can avoid that. You can almost, you can sense when something is wrong. Like when you see up ahead and you see police standing, yeah, you're pretty sure that's going to be a, uh, a lane split stop. And whatever you can do to avoid that, go, you know, drive on the shoulder wrong way or whatever you got to do, get off the exit before, just avoid it entirely and you'll be fine. guys are back on 2nd Avenue with, with me. I'm always here. Going straight to the bridge so you can see that all that shit over there is just completely not moving and the buses are not even moving they're going around stuff so I, I hate to be a dickhead and take the bike lane but sometimes you got to do what you got to do it's raining it's gonna be pouring in, a, in a 30 minutes I don't want to get caught out here so I'm just rushing my way up I just got to go over to 59th Street bridge and uh, make a right turn and I'm done. I'm right there, hand it clean. Unfortunately, near the 59th Street Bridge here, it gets like that. It gets so congested. There's no, uh, no space at all.
That was pretty good. Made it up here. Right to the tram. Make a left here. And uh, pop over the bridge. And I'll be right where I need to go. That was good. Taking that bike lane worked out. I can't wait to get my XR, my Honda XR, because you know when the weather gets warmer, it's really fun to ride that around the city. And I want to get some time to clean up the KLR a little bit, do some maintenance on it, because, it, you know, I've been riding it the whole winter. Only thing I've been doing to it is changing uh, tire tubes. And I put new tires on in the beginning of winter, and I changed bunch of, you know a couple of tubes because uh, when it gets really cold out you pop tubes sometimes and change an oil that's about it lube in the chain you know all that stuff but I'd like to you know just give it a little checking over maybe I'll do a valve job on it I don't know That's probably Mike Fury calling me, the guy that I'm supposed to meet here.
Alright everybody, see you in the next one.